Here's a quick video covering the functionality of the DynaMesh Master plugin for ZBrush 4R8. After you have the plugin installed, you can navigate to the Z plugin palette up here and then open up the DynaMesh Master area. DynaMesh Master will allow you to apply DynaMesh to your model, but instead of using a resolution value, it will allow you to use an estimated poly count. So as an example of this, I can come to the poly count slider here and say type in 2 and then hit enter and now DynaMesh my model. And this will now DynaMesh the model and attempt to reach that 2 million polys. So you can see here, after the process is finished, my active point count is at 1.9 million. So instead of trying to guess on a resolution, you can just come here and type in a poly count number and then process your model. So let's say if I want to now process my model with a poly count of 1 million, I come to the slider, type in 1, hit enter, and now click DynaMesh. And it will now DynaMesh my model and try to achieve a value close to 1 million. So you can see after it's done processing, I now have 1 million points on my mesh. Now the value that you receive after DynaMeshing based on the slider here will be close, but it will never be exact. And this is just because of how ZBrush generates quads and triangles when using DynaMesh. Models that are very boxy will also be able to achieve a closer result to the polycount slider compared to models that are airy in nature. So this slider here is used as an estimate rather than an exact value. Now in addition to just coming through and typing a value here and clicking DynaMesh, there's also some additional options that have been automated in this plugin. So open up this additional area here, you can see that I can perform the DynaMesh function on the selected subtool only, I can perform it across all visible subtools, or even all the subtools that are in your scene. In addition to this, you can keep the DynaMesh active after it's done processing, you can automatically bake any sculpting layers, you can automatically delete subdivisions, you can automatically apply dynamic subdivisions, you can automatically apply nano mesh, and you can automatically apply array mesh. Another option in here is the use auto scalar option. And this will take your model, and if your model is too small or too large, to achieve the estimated poly count. It will automatically scale your mesh up or down. So if you find that the estimated polycon count is not quite as close as you're looking, you can use this auto scale function here, and this will go through and process your mesh, automatically scaling it, which will allow you to achieve a closer resolution to the polygon count slider here. Any of these values can be toggled on or off and also stored as defaults by clicking this button at the bottom. Finally, the DynaMesh Master also has an automated functionality for creating shells or hollowing out a model. Now in this process here, we'll use the shell functionality that exists in the ZBrush DynaMesh area, but it will automate it. So this will look at the size of the subtool you have selected and then generate a thickness value in millimeters based around that size. So as an example, if I come to the thickness value here and say type in 2 for 2 millimeters and now come and click create shell, this will now apply the shell function and generate a hollowing on the model I've selected at 2 millimeter thickness. Now the shell function itself can take some time to process and this will take longer, especially if you have a high polygon count in your model or your thickness value is extremely thin. So just make sure that you have saved before using this function. You'll get this little dialog that's going to pop up to remind you of this, and then you can just click yes to this, and it will now process that shell across the model. Now after the shell process has been completed, you can check this by going to the subtool palette over here. You can append in a cube object. I can select that cube and then switch to the gizmo 3D, and just move it out a little bit, and then move it up like so. And now I can activate the subtraction option here and then turn on live boolean, which will now subtract that cube from my original shape there. And this will now show you the hollowing that has taken place on the mesh. So you can see here that the DynaMesh Master plugin has gone through and automatically shelled the model and it shelled it based on that two millimeter thickness. Once again, when using the create shell function here, it will look at the size of your model to determine the thickness value that can be allocated. So it is highly recommended to use something like the Scale Master plugin here to first scale your model to the appropriate size before using the DynaMesh Master Create Shell function. So that is the quick breakdown of the functionality of the DynaMesh Master plugin for ZBrush 4R8. The DynaMesh Master plugin can be downloaded from the Pixelogic Download Center. Hope that helps, and happy ZBrushing!